Welcome to the Battlefield Show. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, and as always, I'm joined by Sammy Boy. How you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. Very excited for this one. We've uh, we've timed this well yet again, so <laughs> very keen. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about the specialist changes as well as the next season of Battlefield 2042 and the content that it's bringing. So, let's jump right in. I made this joke on the actual post on, on Twitter, so I'm going to reuse uh, reuse it. Uh, but, man, I thought uh, Andrew Tate was uh, banned from all social <laughs> platforms. Why is he in Battlefield? <laughs> He's banned from everywhere but the Battlefield. <laughs> I saw that. That was a uh, <laughs> cracked me up. The timing of that as well. Just like within a day of that all happening, they announced this. Movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it looks like it from the graphics of a video game, but on the actual like designs of the character, it obviously looks different. Yeah, um, but. I, th- I just thought it was funny because as soon as I saw like some of the leaks and stuff, I was like, "That's that's Andrew Twa- Tate. He's uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's British." <laughs> but yeah, we we've, we've got so much to talk about today. Um, do we want to talk about the season or do we want to talk about the specialist stuff first? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, well, guess... let, let's start with this. Let's start with a specialist. That way, we can yeah, end on a yeah. high note of the season, or yeah, hopefully a high note. I have I have some yeah. some discussion, but I think we can we can kind of go over that when we get to the topic. So let's jump right into the specialist, which is like one of the most complicated things to wrap my head around ever. Uh, we were having this discussion <laughs> in the Uplink Discord, uh, friend of the podcast Yepper. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about it. He was like, "Here's another." Um, they had the the notes that shared and then he was like also this explains it further but it also doesn't explain it very well and i'm still confused (laughs) it's like (laughs) same here i have no idea what's going on um but they're shifting kind of what they are doing with specialists specialists are staying uh, staying there um but they are now changing how they kind of sort the specialists it's more of a ui change than anything but it also has some interesting ramifications on the actual gameplay of those specialists what what are your thoughts on kind of the decisions that they made um look for i think we all agree that we would just like perfect world just delete the specialists and put classes but obviously we kind of knew that wasn't going to happen and I think from our discussions, this is kind of what we've been saying the whole time. Like this is kind of mm-hmm. like that middle ground where it's yeah. just as good as they can do, and it's as good as we can get. It's not, yeah, it's not ideal for anyone. I'm sure they aren't that keen to do this, and where we want more. But this is kind of that perfect middle ground. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's not, um, it's not mind blowing. This is kind of just what I thought. If they're going to change something, this is really the only thing I could see them doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think it's. It's the best option they can choose, so I guess I'd say I'm overall pretty happy with it. But for me, with specialists in general, I kind of just don't really care at this point. I only have a few that I stick to, and yeah, they're not to me. It just does feel like classes in a way because I just have like those couple that I use. The rest are just pointless to me. And to be honest, the mm-hmm. new the new specialist looks a little bit pointless to me as well. <laughs> so I don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm not too fussed by it. I'm not. I think it's a good change, but it also doesn't really affect me that much because I just kind of stick mm-hmm. to the, the same couple. Yeah. So what they're doing is they are taking all the specialists that we'd have so far and they're organizing them into the classes. They're also, this is how they put it, they're, quote, redefining the gear and equipment they'll have access to to shape a more defined and understandable role on the battlefield that you are used to. So they, they're separating it into Assault, Support, Engineer, and Recon. Assault has McKay, Sundance, and Dozer. Support has uh, Angel, Falk, and the Season 2 Specialist, because this came out before they actually announced who that was. Um, they also have uh, Engineer, which is Liz, Boris, and Irish, as well as uh, Recon, which is uh, Casper, Paik, and Rao. Um, so I think they made some pretty good decisions on how they um, organize them, but I will say uh, 
also two two call outs in one episode. I think this is a record for him. But Yepper uh, had a very interesting <laughs> point that he made on, on Twitter. Some special he says this quote: "Some specialists won't work in their current classes in Battlefield 2042. Rao is an anti-vehicle specialist who can't hack a vehicle, then shoot a rocket at it because he's recon instead of engineer." As recon, he is way less useful, and helis will dominate infantry again. And then he says, uh, McKay should be moved from assault to recon, as that's what his grapple is for, getting to a height advantage so you can see more and to a place at, and to place a spawn beacon out of sight for your squad. Yes, some people use him for anti-vehicle, but recon still has C5. Uh, I know this means we will have four engineers and only two assault, but balancing the specialists and making sure they can fill out all of their intended roles is a lot more important than having an even number in each class. That's a very good point that I haven't actually, weirdly enough, I haven't looked through the, I mean, I'd looked through them, but I hadn't actually put two and two together as to which specialist mm-hmm. now can't use which things. And yeah, that's a very good point. I haven't, I haven't even thought about that. That's um, It's a, it's a mm. very good point of like, yes, it is an even amount in each one, but I don't, the way they made specialists and the way the system works, it does not work for even distribution of them throughout the new classes. Yeah. And I, I, I think even though it may affect some people's OCD, it needs to be distributed in a way that makes sense for the specialists versus just them They like, hey, we need an even amount in each one. Yeah, and the, the way they can fix that too is just add more for the... If there's one that has... If one class has like two less than everyone else, just add one the next season or something so i agree with that i think you, you got to choose it for balancing not for so mm-hmm. there's three things in each class for example there's a few people that are like oh well, i think it's a good decision blah 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 teamwork it's like people don't really i know we all want people to play teamwork but reality and seeing it as it is versus how we want it to be those are two very different things yeah. and I don't think making them into these different organizations will change how people will play them. They may play different specialists now, but that's not going to make them more likely to be teamwork players. Yeah, the way I see it is it'll change how people play individually. This will not affect teamwork in even the slightest. It doesn't that's not mm-hmm. how you got to like put incentives to play for your team. This doesn't mm-hmm. change anything. Also the systems, I, I just saw another one where it's like, Battlefield is team play, use coordination to win. They do not empower that at all. You cannot yeah. use coordination because you don't have persistent servers. You can't forge any relationships with yeah. people in between rounds. Yeah. It's just not something. And the whole thing with talking to people on your team, it's limited so greatly, as well as cross-team play. You have four people that you can talk to. You can kind of text people on your team your squad like on your side but it's not very consistent and it doesn't work for everybody Mm. yeah it's the the thing you mentioned about like the lack of persistent servers is the biggest one because there's actually a lot of times like i'll be in a game and obviously because aussie um servers are a lot less populated a lot of people in the servers will know my channel and they'll be like oh hey sammy like good to see you and we'll be in a squad and we'll play like we'll play like the best team ever and then the next game, I'm just like, oh, well, I'll never see that person again. And yeah. <laughs> if there was persistent servers, if I joined a game and there's someone that knows of the channel, I'm going to be like, hey, do you want to squad up? And we get a squad going. And that's how you make like friendships, but also we're going to play as a team because they. that's mm-hmm. how it goes. When you join a squad with someone on purpose, you generally start... I know when I play... Like I'm generally, when I'm playing solo, I play pretty solo. I don't. I still play the objective, but I'm not running around like being the best teammate but when i'm playing with friends i'm mm-hmm. the best teammate i'm just running around reviving everyone throwing down ammo because that's the way that you want to play with you with people that you know so yeah that's the biggest issue and it's yeah all the changes they're making are really good but i'm going to just sound like a broken record until i add server browser this game just isn't complete and it, it needs to be done mm-hmm. it's it's actually kind of embarrassing that we're at this point there's they're now into their second season second battle pass all those things and the one of the key elements of the game still isn't there, and they haven't really touched, like they haven't mentioned it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's pretty frustrating. But I, I'm not sure if it'll actually happen or not. Now they they just kind of yeah. Swept I highly doubt we'll ever get it. Um, but it would actually promote 
the idea of the team play that they're so obsessed with. When a game does not launch with voice over IP or consistent squatting with people and inconsistent crossplay, like you're not going to have team play. You can have a belief of this is how it should be, but that's very different from what it is. And yeah. I think we can push for what it should be, but we also need to be aware of what it actually is and how the systems in place are not supporting that. Um, so I, I think it's it's definitely some it's a good start, but I still think that there's a lot of work to go here. And I think they picked the the most half effort possible for this version of like, oh, we're just going to sort them into different things. It is the the one, it's the, it's the decision that we thought they were going to make, honestly. Yeah. Um, we said, we, we pitched this a while ago and like, this is probably what both they'll do. Um, but I think they need to be more aware of it just because the level of content right now does not support the level of um, exclusion. But... It's a good starting point. Obviously, now that they have these, I think they're they may be more motivated on the specialist of which direction they take them, dependent on which classes they want to support more of. So that could be a good thing. But like you said, uh, beginning the specialist at this point isn't really something that either of us are really interested in. Honestly, um, we're gonna we're probably gonna still keep on playing who we've been playing. The yeah. real thing is the map. Uh, yeah. that's upcoming yeah, but um, in terms of how they're actually divvying out the uh, equipment they have uh, class equipment which is always available uh, and for the assault you have the med pen for the support you have the defibrillator uh, for the engineer you have the repair tool and the recon gets the insertion beacon class gadgets which you can choose one of assault you have the option of the smoke grenade launcher the c5 explosive or the iba armor plane for support, you get the ammo crate, the smoke grenade launcher, medical crate, or the M18 Claymore. For engineer, you get the anti-tank mine, recoilless M5, the FXM33AA missile, the FGM148 javelin, and the EOD bot. And then for the recon, you get the TUGS, the proximity sensor, SOFLAM, C5 explosives, and the tracer dart gun. So that's something that you can choose one, which is the class gadget. And then you can also throw do uh, choose a one throwable. For the assault, you have the frag smoke or incendiary. Uh, and then all of the other ones, you get the frag smoke or EMP launcher or EMP or the incendiary. So like basically all of the other ones get the same thing except for assault, which you only get to choose from three. Which is a weird choice too, because the EMP is not like mm -hmm. an, an overpowered like that. <laughs> Looking at that, it's just... yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets the same except for assault. You yeah. suck. Because it's like it'd be different if it was like they can't use smoke, right? Because then that's a bit more exclusive to support. They can throw down smoke and help their team. I'd understand mm -hmm. that, but the EMP is just like, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> I just don't Why? see the, the point in removing that. But yeah, it's. Again, all this stuff doesn't really bother me too much. Um, I can still use Sundance with C5, and that's all I really care about. It's the only... Mm -hmm. It's like that, and then playing Falk with an ammo grate, which I can still do as well. That's really all, all that I use. So um, I think it's... Yeah, it's it's a good change for the game. I think it's still... It's better than it, what, like, what it currently is, just because it's a bit more structured, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But like you said, we don't... Yeah, I don't really care for this that much. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just, it's the part of the game that I'm like brushing to the side and I'm like, yeah, it, I'll just put up mm -hmm. with it for this game and then hopefully we get the class system back next time. Yeah. So they 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 put out this core feedback to get uh, more feedback on what they're looking for. They want to hear uh, if we feel that specialists are currently categorized into their appropriate class, which gadgets and throwables do you expect to see in the loadout for each class, uh, and what further changes to specialists can you ex would you expect to come to enforce that? Um, they're still working on the gameplay and the balancing. Um, the other key aspect of this is we won't see these changes until season three, which uh, if it'd be what, August, September, October, November at the earliest. Damn, that's a year, isn't it? Until like mm -hmm. after launch, that's actually 
It's a long time. Yeah. Uh, they made a good point that because I was a little bit when I heard that I was like, oh man, really? But they did make a good point that this is a even though I've just said I don't care for it in the broad like scheme of the game, it is a pretty fundamental element, and I guess it's better for them to make sure they get it right rather than do something that you know if they do it in season two and it kind of sucks then that's going to like mess the game up for three months so Mm -hmm. it does suck but like i said i also the thing with me not caring for it is it doesn't really change anything for me so i'm not even that fussed when we actually get it um so yeah it's kind of just a it has pros and cons i wish it was sooner just because it'd be cool to get it implemented but then also it's I guess probably better to make sure they get it right. And at least now they can, you know, they've done this one, they'll get our feedback. And then like all the other feedback loops they've done, they do seem to actually listen and maybe all the stuff, for example, what Yepa was saying, like maybe they'll actually look into that and change it. So I guess it is probably better to to slow down and make sure they get it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this will definitely give them a lot more time to get feedback, get discussion around it going. So I I think ultimately it will be good. It's just a shame that they still won't be in a great place a year after the game came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that's uh, The the thing that sucks is that even two years after the game comes out, they probably won't be either because it's just the Mm -hmm. whole system's kind of flawed. So it's like... It is. Yeah. And it's fundamentally flawed. It's not yeah. like, it's not something that, like, they put a new coat of paint on an old car that mm. the doors still fall off of. Yeah. I think the thing with the specialist system is that, one, I can see why they did it because everyone, every other shooter was doing it. So I don't really, like, blame them. And then also mm-hmm. with uh, Hazard Zone, if that had have actually taken off and, you know, it looked like a, a fun game mode and it was when I played it, but it didn't really obviously take off. But for that, the the specialist system was actually really good. Like it actually worked so well. So mm-hmm. I can kind of see why they tried it. And I don't, yeah, as much as it, I think it sucks. I don't, <laughs> I don't blame them because, you know, th- they'd be all looking at all the other games making so much money where it doesn't, those games don't, it doesn't like negatively impact the game. But yeah. For this game, it does. Unfortunately, this just doesn't work with the type of game that Battlefield is. It's not Call of Duty. It's just, they're just not the same. So, yeah, it's uh, at least, uh, the the positive is at least they've tried it and hopefully you would surely think for the next, like for forever, they won't do this again and just go back to the class system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hopefully. Um, I think too is they, they made the wrong decision on we need to have identifiable characters and they have to be done this way it's like you can have identifiable characters but you, i mean uh battlefield one did this and battlefield mm. five did this too of like yeah that's the part uh, I get. battlefield five more so than battlefield one but like they had these key characters that you could play as that were like they had names they had different outfits yeah. you can choose for those characters like they could have done it they just didn't really decide to and they almost tried to do like this weird mix of heroes from battlefront and the characters like in apex legends kind of but not really yeah it's kind of a it's a weird mix isn't it it wasn't really this is one of those things that it does it felt like they tried too much to look at what everyone else is doing rather than getting the idea and doing it the battlefield way that's like in the past that's how they they would see other companies doing this or that and they would put their own spin on it that actually was like tailored to the game, whereas this more felt like the other way around. It was like, this doesn't really fit the game, but like, I guess we should try it. So let's just do it. <laughs> Everyone else is doing it. Might as well try it on our side. <laughs> um, yeah, I. We'll, we'll see how it goes as um, we continue on, but uh, I think it still needs a lot of work. And I think it 
it has fundamental problems that a new coat of paint isn't going to fix. It's good that it's going this way, but ultimately it doesn't really change anything. It just makes everything more complicated. And I think they needed a, a deeper fix. But because of the time crunch, they probably were having all of the discussions that we're having right now internally. But they just came up to like, well, we need to do something, so let's just do this. Yeah, that's the way it's like. The way it feels is that, like we've kept saying, they're probably going to finish up after season four, and th- this is coming out in season three, so mm-hmm. they can't push it back that much further. <laughs> like they can't push it to season five because that's probably not going to happen. So, um. Yeah, it's it's just the whole thing is just an unfortunate situation, really. It's not, I don't look at these changes and be like, oh my God, Dice is so like stupid. What are they doing? Because at the end of the day, they kind of just made a bad decision at the start and they've just had to live with that. And so have we. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's just one of those situations. It's like, this is just how it is. And we, we just have to deal with it until yeah, the next game that hopefully they just wake up and go, okay, we tried that. It really didn't work. Let's just go back to classes and yeah, do what they do with yeah. with Battlefield Five, where they can you can still have like characters. It doesn't have to be just faceless mm-hmm. soldiers. Like you can do a mix of both. Um, you could even do. You could even just have them all every. For example, in this game, obviously this wouldn't work, but just as an example, you could have all of these same characters, but they're just a class. So in you can choose the assault class. And then you can just pick, and they, and they don't have their own specialty gadgets and stuff. You can just pick which character you want to play as. So you can choose Dozer, uh, McKay, or Sundance. They all just have the same class, but they're just a different character. You can do mm-hmm. it that way. It's not the end of the world. Um, I also, yeah, that's another thing that I, I don't really care for that either, to be honest. But that's the best way of them getting in there, um, their skins and all that kind of thing. But at the same time, I don't think selling skins you have to have them as characters i don't yeah think that's an issue you can have a regular soldier that i can't see their face and still make a skin that makes me go oh i need to buy that that looks so sick so mm-hmm. um, yeah I, th- I think they've tried a lot with the, like the this battlefield universe thing that they mentioned at the start of the year yeah we haven't really i guess maybe we'll see that in the future i'm not sure but these characters like they haven't done anything with them yet. The only one mm-hmm. that they did was Irish, and that was the before the game launched. And that was kind of more of a reveal because, like, he's obviously a pre-established character. None of the other characters, they've done the little blog posts and stuff, but they haven't, like, in this trailer that just came out, for example, you see all the characters. Like, there was that real close-up of Falk, like, walking mm-hmm. through the thing, and it's like, I see that that's Falk, but I don't know any more about Falk from all these trailers. I don't... Yeah. This new Crawford guy, I just know that he's British. I don't actually know anything about him. He's an arms dealer uh-huh. from England. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> good. That's cool. I'll just move on. And that's to way more than I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I don't really... The whole character thing that they want to buy into, I, I see I see why, because Call of Duty's done it so well and there's like Captain Price and Ghost who are like, they're like the faces of that franchise. So I do get it, but I don't think, I just don't think Battlefield needs that. It's meant to be a big Battlefield with hundreds of players on it. It's not Call of Duty where it's like built around these specific characters. I just don't think that they need to go down that path. But yeah, if they do in the future, Mm -hmm. I think there's just better ways to do it. Yeah, I think so. I I did kind of, I think... A, maybe a good option would have been like in the next game they have these core characters and uh maybe they have one integral feature but they can go in between the classes i think that could be interesting it would solve a lot of the weird balancing issues almost making them kind of like reinforcements and and battlefront where you, you kind of have something mm-hmm. like that but I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult problem to solve, and I can understand why they went with it uh, with this decision because it is such a varied topic, and I think there were so many different paths that they just needed to choose one. They did choose the most boring one, but it is the most easiest to implement and hopefully the most easiest to develop upon. So yeah. hopefully it's good. Yeah, I think like it's probably a lot of what I've said probably sounds like negative, like I'm having a whinge. Actually, I think it's a good change. It's more just like. It's kind of just too late for me is the only negative I have towards it. But the changes are good, and I think it, it'll 
it's going to be better than what it is now. So I can't, I definitely can't complain about that. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the new season coming up. We, we mentioned it a lot. Uh, we have a new specialist, uh, what is his name? I, uh, Crawford, <laughs> I think it is. I could actually be wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It is. I think it is Crawford. Uh, see, like they they started so strong with this of like, oh hey, these are the characters. This is a storyline that you can follow along. And now it's like, uh, who's this guy? Um, <laughs> yeah. Charlie Crawford, this charismatic ex arms dealer, brings a lot to <laughs> brings a lot to the table. <laughs> We Does won't tell know? you what he brings, just it's a lot, okay? <laughs> Trust us, I promise. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> uh, he's got the mounted Vulcan stationary minigun. Uh, keep your enemies right where you want them with this beast. It lays down immense firepower, making it extremely effective against light vehicles and infantry, uh, as well as cash points. Supplies revived squad members with extra gadget ammo. Um, so that's pretty good. So we have... Um, Rampart is that his name in uh, in Apex? Yeah, uh, very similar. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Rampart basically, uh, he's got uh, a big turret that you can launch down, and uh, it's stationary minigun. Seems interesting. Um. I think it 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 it's definitely one of the most impactful to the battlefield abilities that a specialist has had so far right because other people could use it yeah. maybe that's not actually a, so, yeah. a, maybe not no i think like the thing the way i see it is like for me the way that i play how i said earlier that i like i don't think i'll use him i think mm -hmm. he's just like too stationary for me I, i'm like to i like to be on the move all the time but i think like you can put this thing down and you can like lock down especially on the new map like it looks very close quarters you could probably lock down a whole area not necessarily killing everyone there, but like they'll hear the turret and mm -hmm. they'll, that you shoot them and they might not die straight away, but they'll get behind cover and go, I'm not going back out there. Um, and the fact that, like you said, everyone else can use it as well. I do agree. It's probably a very, uh, yeah, one of the most impactful abilities that we have. I can't really think of, I guess the Surrette pistol kind of helps everyone, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's also just one, only one person can use that. So yeah. yeah, it's definitely, it's it's a unique ability. I kind of saw it and I was like, mm, I don't know about that. But then the more that I think about it, I think it can be used fairly well. The The thing I'm worried about is <laughs> on on launch day that everyone's going to hit you. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're, they're, no one will have, like, it'll be a stationary No one will be map. running around. Yeah, they won't. It, it will just be a bunch of people be... waiting <laughs> for people. Yeah. So I, I think he's going to be, the same with Lise when she dropped. Everyone was like, oh, she's so overpowered and everyone's using her. It's, that's just how it will be for everyone. That could be the worst specialist mm -hmm. ever. Everyone's going to use them. Um, so I think the first like week or two is going to be pretty annoying, to be honest. Yeah. But I don't think that's I think it's necessarily to do with him. I think that's just how these things mm -hmm. go. Yeah. I think it's interesting that they went on, uh, they brought in an anti-infantry specialist. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. they say light vehicles, but who uses light vehicles, really? Yeah. This is just, you're going to sit down and you're going to mow down people. You're not yeah. going to be able to stand up against a tank. Um, so I think it's an interesting choice, which leads directly into the map, which it's like we talked about last week. It is the map uh, of a stranded um, shipping container ship, um, freight ship. It's... Uh, big gigantic thing filled with red and yellow boxes <laughs> it's they have some sort of like addiction to shipping containers yeah. in this <laughs> they, they do <laughs> don't they know how expensive steel is yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah uh visually this is probably the most boring map it does not look interesting it does not look cool but from all of the people that got early access, it, they say it's the most fun map on there so far. Just because it's a lot of, most people will go inside of the ship and that's where all the fun happens. Mm. Um, it's a weird but, one. I, I'm not sure how to feel. Like, it looks like it, I don't know, when I saw the initial, it looks like cool, but when I saw the initial, and this was like the other day, the the um the initial like trailer thing, the... 
I don't know. It looked not that fun. It looked like discarded. Two point. I was just about to say that it looks like another area on discarded. It does not look yeah. like its own map. Yeah, but from the stuff that they showed in this trailer, I've actually kind of changed my mind on it. Obviously, we won't know till we play, so we can't really like make up an opinion because we haven't played it. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It actually looks kind of cool, and from what everyone was saying. Like it play, I've heard a lot of people say this is actually better than exposure, which for me, like, that's very good to hear. So, mm-hmm. uh, this is yeah, this is what you and I especially have been asking for. Like, give us a an infantry based map, and this seems to be that. Um, yeah, and yeah, it looks. It also looked very bland in the first thing that we saw, but then some of the stuff we saw today that was like, there's a lot more. Um, I don't know. There, there's like different almost different biomes to it. There's the interior, there's the outside area on, I don't know, the, mm-hmm. the far side that has, it's actually like lush and it has, you know, trees and grass and everything. And then there's another part that's kind of like, I guess where the canal was that's all like drained and it's just like dirt. So as much as it doesn't look, especially coming from exposure, like that's a really good mm-hmm. looking map. I don't know if it looks as good, but I do think it'll be nice and refreshing that it, every area kind of looks different, which is something Yeah. That on Discarded, for example, it's just brown, like, everywhere. Even inside the ship, it's just rusty. Like, it, it all just looks the same. So <laughs> I think that's something that I, that kind of, I had a very changed opinion because when I, when I first saw it the other day, that overview, I was like, oh, it kind of looks pretty bland. Um, but, it, yeah, it actually looks, I actually changed my mind quite a bit when I saw the, the whole map mm-hmm. rather than just that overview. Yeah. I think visually it is the most boring, but it has definitely the most potential to be fun. I was having um, uh, in the Discord, Jordan, who we covered the topic for f- last episode, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, just kind of talking about how it seems very clear that they did not have as much time to work on this map as they did for exposure. Yeah. I noticed on the, like the interior where the, the um, shipping containers are, that they're all very pristine. There's no, that Mm -hmm. thing that we're missing from the maps that they're changing that like grit kind of does, maybe not on the outside. I think the outside looks gritty enough, but the inside of the, it looks the ship. brand spanking new. Yeah, it, there's no like, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. There's just every all the shipping containers are perfectly red. There's no like rust. There's no anything like that. So mm-hmm. it does feel like maybe this was. I'm not going to say rushed because I'm sure they've been working on this for a long time, but like not as much time feels like it was mm-hmm. put into this as exposure, especially because it's smaller too. So you'd think a smaller map they would kind of have more time to do you know to add to the detail yeah it's like they they worked on the ship itself and they're like crap we don't have enough space here (laughs) well just put uh discarded's outside area confine it a little bit and you're good (laughs) um it doesn't seem it's not the kind of map that we would want it is containers on a ship in the middle of a desert yeah Uh, (laughs) yeah that's the thing on paper it sounds really bad it it doesn't Mm -hmm. sound good at all yeah, it's like who who thought this was a good idea to make a map? <laughs> Obviously, if the gameplay's good, I'm all there for it. Yeah. But visually, it's just not very exciting, and I don't see how people will come. Like, if if there is a trailer that showed how the outside looked, like they barely even touched on under the trailer because it's stupid, it's boring, it doesn't look good. Uh, but the inside, I think, has a lot of potential to be fun, and I think yeah. that's what we're looking for is those close quarter stuff. Yeah, and even um, like the outside of the map looks, you can tell that it's a lot more confined, so it's not, it's, everything isn't spread out. It feels like there's the ship in the middle, but then, you know, only 100 meters from that is like the the next flag, and it actually looks, as much as I don't, yeah, it doesn't look like the most appealing map from a aesthetic standpoint. It looks fun to play, even even the outside areas. It's it's also got a lot of that like terrain deviation where it's not just flat. It's like there is actually hills and there's areas with trees and there's like a big built up area with a helipad and like a radio tower and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it actually looks. That's the thing, like you said. I, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it looks like discarded. If it's really fun, I just don't care at all what it looks like. So I'm I'm really excited for it. Yeah. 
I just know I won't be spending much time outside. I will be <laughs> trying to spend as much time inside for that close quarters combat yeah. as I can. Yeah. Just because that's what I want so much out of Battlefield. And if, yeah. if this gives it to me, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, I, I think Yepper knows that we're recording the podcast right now because <laughs> <laughs> he's replying to that that discussion we were having about this map. He's like, I think gameplay will be very different from what we're, we've seen. But yeah, I also wish it was uh, in a setting 2042 did not already offer. Yeah. Not a big complaint, though. If the map's good, I ain't going to care if that. It's similar to uh, Discarded. And then he says, Star Wars has sand planets. Battlefield 2042 has Discarded. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a very good point, though, that, like, yeah, I, I, we've just spent how many minutes talking about how it looks and that we're not the biggest fan of it, but I do not care if it is if it's fun i don't care what it looks like so mm-hmm. my overall it's a thoughts struggle. on it so far is that it looks like it looks fun to play on and everyone that has played it has said it's really fun i've even heard like i said many people saying it's it's more enjoyable than exposure so i'm pretty sure i'm going to really like it I, I probably have sounded like i'm complaining i couldn't care less what it looks like to be honest i just <laughs> uh, i want some really close quarters gameplay without vehicles and stuff i think i don't know if I was watching Jack Frag's video. I don't know if he said that the actual mode doesn't have vehicles or if they just did it for that playtest, but he said that Breakthrough, their their Breakthrough didn't have vehicles. So Breakthrough on this map without vehicles, that sounds like my absolute dream. So I'm very, I would love very that, but that. Yeah. I highly doubt it considering how freaking obsessed the Battlefield community <laughs> yeah. is with vehicles. <laughs> yeah, and especially because they've added these two new ones as well, I, I think, like... It'll yeah, be and in the like, gameplay maybe trailer, like they have time. vehicles. Yeah, I don't. I definitely don't think it's permanent. I think it was more um, for that exact playtest, which is kind of weird because I guess you'd also want to show off the vehicles. But yeah, I don't know. I guess it probably maybe they know that the the vehicles kind of get in the way of <laughs> good gameplay. So uh-huh. <laughs> if we could just get like a a limited time, what they've kind of done in the past, where it's like the. Mm-hmm. The opposite of that tank mode that they just had. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Dude, we were talking about last week how, oh, hey, what happened to the tornadoes? Well, there are two of them on this map. Now there's two. (laughs) And (laughs) we went from zero to two. (laughs) Because as soon as I said that, that I hadn't seen them in, like, it feels like months. It feels like absolute months. I have been playing this week, and I reckon every game I've seen a tornado. <laughs> so I don't know if they've <laughs> ramped it up in preparation because there's going to be more. They're like, you know, getting it. They've they've already like, guys. It or we something. we set we set the the show up time for the tornadoes to zero. Did we need to do that? <laughs> oh crap! No, they haven't been on this whole time. Okay, turn it back on. Let's give them two to make up for it. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure how that's going to go. I'm very. I wonder if that's is that like confirmed from a gameplay perspective i know we saw it in the trailer but i'm wondering if that was a just a trailer thing because that would be weird to have two uh, didn't they have a tweet around it here mm. i'm scrolling through the map trailer that they have and you're right they do have a lot more locations than they actually highlighted in that one trailer yeah um because the they actual got the garage. Official trailer was like not it was like a good trailer, but it, did, it was actually not that good at showing off what they mm-hmm. have, I think. I was so confused on what the game actually was bringing that I had to immediately follow up and like, okay, I had to go to all of the different blogs be like, what's <laughs> actually coming to this game? <laughs> um, they don't say anything in the tr- the map trailer, it seems. Mm. Uh, at least as far as I can tell. Favors CQ close quarters combat warfare. CQC. They're being all fancy with their. <laughs> yeah. Is, was it one of the developers or something? Someone shared a Someone post. Someone did it. We're not going crazy, guys. I'm, I promise. <laughs> we swear. <laughs> There's no chance both of us just like dreamt that same thing or something. <laughs> the thing for me was that, because this is why it's all blurry for me, because this trailer dropped at 1 a.m. And I went to bed at like <laughs> 10 and I actually set my alarm because I thought like, because I, I didn't know what was happening. And I thought if this is a big thing, I'll wake up at one and do some work. Mm-hmm. So I wake up and watched it and was like, oh, that's really good. But then I was like, oh, I'm just, I'll make a video tomorrow. 
And then so then I've gone back to sleep. And so now I've woken up and I just don't know what's real and what isn't. Like I probably had multiple <laughs> dreams that were like about this trailer that I now Tornadoes. I'm like thinking, Yeah. Now I'm thinking the things Storage are real containers. <laughs> Yeah. Um I it seems at least as far as the trailer is concerned and the tweet that we cannot find <laughs> that there are two tornadoes. They went from no tornadoes to two tornadoes. Mm. Um which I think will add a very interesting level because I think I think it's cool if it is two tornadoes. Again, yeah. that is a, a as an if that it may be fueled by one AM wake ups and <laughs> delusional checking of Twitter. Um <laughs> Somehow, I was also in that dream and dreamed that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's, it was it, just it, me, it, I, I would just straight up say, nah, I definitely must have dreamt it. <laughs> but it seems like it's real. Yeah. I, I clearly remember this tweet. Um, but I found it. It was Kevin. It, it was? was Kevin, yes. Okay. Played, Hallelujah. Check out the gameplay trailer and then two tornadoes and then a, a finger pointing down to it. So, they, yeah. The, the fact yes. that there was two in the trailer, even if they didn't confirm anything, they are really good at putting stuff in the trailers that are in-game. They very rarely actually do stuff that is, like, something in the trailer and then it's not actually in the game. Obviously, the trailers don't necessarily represent the game because the, <laughs> they're always better than the games. But everything in these trailers for, for years, since Battlefield 3 and 4 and stuff, like, if there's something in the trailer, you can almost bet that it's that is going to happen in the game. So I'm pretty so, sure it will happen. Caddy boy on there uh, on Kevin's post asked, "Are there multiple tornadoes just for show, or will they actually be in game?" And Kevin responds with, "It is indeed a thing." Oh, okay, so it is confirmed. We got there mm. after ten minutes. We we managed it. <laughs> <laughs> So two tornadoes. It makes a lot of sense because I think what would be interesting if one tornado is on one side, one tornado is on the other side, it will force you into the middle, which is mm. good. And I think yeah. we need more stuff like this in Battlefield 2042 maps because they need ways to guide you into the places that will cause combat. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing that is it does feel like it's lacking with like um, no revolution is they could do some really cool stuff like that. For example... Like I said last week, imagine if like Manifest had a big tidal wave that put the whole bottom of the map where it's like where the shipping containers are, not fully underwater, but it makes it like a bit less enjoyable to be there, I guess you would say. And then mm -hmm. it pushes everyone up onto that hill towards the end of the game. Like imagine how fun yeah. that would be where everyone you see the tidal wave coming in and you look you're at the top of the hill and you look down and there's like a hundred people running up the hill <laughs> shooting each yes. other. Like things like that. That's where the they really could have tried to put this weather effect into, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, pushing people into certain areas and having it rather than the tornadoes currently, it just like happens and it doesn't necessarily cause anything. It just like happens. If they use those to actually force people into mm -hmm. doing different things, for example, which actually kind of does work, um, on Hourglass, the Sandstorm, I do feel like that actually kind of pushes people to be in those close quarters areas because you can't see as far. Yeah. So things like that, that's a, that would be a really cool way to, you know, push people into those areas. And like you said, this could be a way that if they can try and make them a bit more on rails almost, instead of being random, like put them actually on each side of the map every time and push people into the middle, mm. that would actually be a lot of fun. I think so too. I think that's that's what it was lacking when they said, "Oh, hey, there are tornadoes." It's like, what are were they for? It's, it's a tornado. What the frick are you doing? Yeah. Um, it didn't have a purpose. Yep. It's you need to have a purpose for this thing. It needs to gu guide the gameplay and the experience of the game. Yeah, and you I think something like this, and it like mm -hmm. it changes the map, and then you're no longer going up to the top to capture C. You, you're fighting over that like the rubble. That's what mm -hmm. it needs. That's what this game needs with the the weather effects for sure. Yeah, so I think I think that's a good choice. I think it's cool. Uh, we'll see how well it performs with two tornadoes on there. Yeah, just, that's very true. <laughs> Everyone's games just crash. Yeah. Well, I have a thirty ninety, and I'm only getting ten frames per second. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good choice. I'm glad we finally found confirmation. Yeah. Because I genuinely thought I was had lost the plot for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, n- now moving on to uh, like equipment and um, they call it new hardware. They have a uh, concussion grenade and the mounted Vulcan stationary that we talked uh, about earlier. Concussion grenade, definitely interesting. Uh, those were the bane of my existence in uh, Battlefront. I hate those things so mm-hmm. much. True. Uh, but they definitely are effective in gameplay and they I think they'll work really well in this situation and the map that they have. Yeah, that's that's true. In the close quarters areas, it should be. And as, yeah, I guess if there's too many of them, it'll get a bit annoying. But I think the good thing with the grenades in this game is that, for example, in Call of Duty, like you can bring a concussion grenade and a frag grenade. So everyone mm-hmm. has the concussion grenade. Well, I think they're called stun grenades in COD. In this game, if you use a concussion grenade, you can't use the other ones. So I think that's actually a good, you know, balance of. Well, yeah, I want to use this, but I, on these close quarters areas, or maybe I want to use a frag grenade and try and get some big multi kills. So I can't have both, and that's hopefully going to balance it out a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Um, I expect no one will be able to see the first week this is out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're also bringing it <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe take a break for the first week if yeah. you have uh, any seizures or <laughs> no, anything No, it's just like going to be stationed, people standing still with behind their That's turret true. throwing grenades <laughs> at each other. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, because there aren't uh, specialist caps, so like everyone's going to be um, yeah. Crawford, <laughs> and everyone will have the turret or the minigun and <laughs> just throw grenades at each other. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, they're also bringing three weapons. Um, they have the AM40. Uh, between it, they say it hits the sweet spot between assault rifle and submachine gun. Uh, they also have the Avancy, which is designed for maximum mobility and attachment compatibility, which is a LMG, and uh, the PF51 uh, as well. I think that's more of the machine gun, right? It's a. It's actually or a pistol. It's, a pistol? it's like an automatic yeah. pistol. So I'm really happy mm. for that because, to be honest, all the pistols in this game are just like not that good. They're garbage. And yeah. And I, so it's like having this. I th- and it sounds a bit like overpowered having a essentially an SMG in your back pocket. But like if everyone mm-hmm. has one, I don't think it's going to be overpowered. And it, from the looks of it, it shoots pretty quick. But I'd imagine it'll have terrible range and like low damage. Yeah. So. I think it'll be Which fun. is what think, we need. Yeah, like that's the type of stuff you need for... It's worked in the past. They had like the G18s back in Battlefield 3 and 4. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with an automatic pistol, I don't think, as long as it's not obviously like as good as an SMG. You shouldn't be beating an SMG in a gunfight. But yeah. <laughs> if I'm running around with a sniper, which is something that I often do right now, like the pistols as backup, they're not... It's not terrible. The I forget the name of the the like base one but it's it's not terrible but it's not that good whereas having this i'll feel a bit more confident that i can actually run around with the sniper and then if i get in trouble in close quarters i can actually pull that out and mm-hmm. i'll probably still lose to an smg but it gives me that bit of a chance at least which is a th- yeah. good thing for sure so i, I think uh, i've been using the oh, what is it called the a marksman Let rifle i'm assuming if it's not a yes rifle. it is a marksman rifle um, um, or the svk SVK, there yeah, we right. are. It's yeah. like uh, so close, so close. <laughs> uh, SVK. So I've been using that a lot uh, on exposure, and there are certain situations where it works perfectly. Like it's just the right amount of long distance, just the right amount of medium distance. What where it sucks is close quarters. Where it sucks is when you get into trying to capture a point and they're right there, and you can't. Like you, it's really hard to hip fire. Mm-hmm. And I've been using, I've been testing out a lot of the pistols. So something like this is exactly what I've been wanting. It's like it will add a little bit of extra oomph, but yeah. all of the other, all of the other pistols are so crappy and so underpowered that we need something like this because mm. of all of the the lacking in the other areas. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think it's something that in an, in like other games it can be. Like, I don't know, it, it can end up unbalanced, but I think in a game like Battlefield, it, it, it I don't know, it just seems to, to work. In all the previous um, Battlefields that have had, like, automatic pistols and stuff, 
they never seem to be like overpowered. It's just it's better mm-hmm. than the other pistols, but then everyone can use it, so it's not you're not lo- this is going to be the pistol that now everyone uses, but it's not going to be better than your assault rifle. So it's not like everyone's going to be running around with this thing, if you know what I mean. It's everyone yeah. has it, but not everyone's going to be using it at all times. So it's kind of like a it automatically balances itself because it's it's a, still a pistol. It's not better than the rest of the weapons in the game. Hmm. Exactly. I I I love this addition, and I hope this kind of dri- I hope this drives the other pistols to get buffs instead of yeah. this one is super overpowered and they just nerf the crap out of it. Yeah. We we shall see for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's. There's a lot of stuff that we. That seems logical and that doesn't often happen. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. But <laughs> that's a that's a good point that I, I would like the other ones to get. Maybe now they can, because this will be like the close quarters ones, maybe the other ones can get a bit of a buff to their range so that they're not still not going to be amazing. But like if this one's just too close quarters for, you know, for someone to use, if they want a bit of extra range, then the other ones are at least viable because I can tell already that the other ones aren't viable once this is in the game. I think this one will be, everyone will be using it, which is, it's a good thing for now for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Uh, and then let's go on to something that I'm not as excited about because it's the new vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they have one, which is uh, the Polaris RZ, RZR, um, and it's an in-world vehicle coming in the first season update. That's so weird. What the heck? Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not dropping straight away. It's kind of weird. Uh, that's super weird. Why, why, why? That's such a weird way to say it. In-world vehicle coming in the fir- in-world. What does that even mean? Oh, so I think it just um, means like it's not a. It's, it's not, one not you can spawn a fiction. Into. It's just one that's like oh. around the map. I think is what they mean. Which okay. is yeah, it's a weird I, way. In-world is a weird way to say it. Also, because it's actually a real. This is a real car. Yeah, so, I thought it was maybe they something someone sponsored it, and that's that's something yeah. that they had to point out because it's a real vehicle or something. But yeah, no, that's that what makes I, a lot more sense. That's what I thought when I first read it too, because they were saying that because it's a Polaris is obviously a real brand. Yeah, um, I thought they meant in world as in like it's a re- it's a real car, and I was yeah, like, that's a weird <laughs> way to say it. like. <laughs> This is an in-world car, meaning it's real. Like what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I, no, then you- I thought, oh, because it's just a transport. It must just be like, yeah, how there's there's one scattered around the map. It must be one mm-hmm. of them. That's what I'm assuming. I don't actually know that, but yeah, yeah, because it's a buggy. I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah, it is a real-world p- brand that is coming into the game, uh, but it may also be just on the the battlefield. So yeah. Uh, and then they also have the big boy, which is the uh, EBLC Ram, which is a new four-seater, and looks like it is going to cause so much havoc and <laughs> frustration in terms of me, who never sees a vehicle unless it is right behind me, and then it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of gives me um, bolty vibes again. Mm-hmm. I'm really yep. nervous about. <laughs> I'm getting some PTSD of like, oh crap, this is going to be one of those yeah. vehicles. <laughs> yeah, one of the like. Let's have a transport that is going to destroy everything. The annoying thing is that they've set, they've come out and said this is an infantry focused vehicle. Mm-hmm. I do not want that in this game. Yeah. I do not want vehicles that are designed to kill me. <laughs> Make tanks. That's fine because tanks can kill tanks, and they're a bit slow and cumbersome. They're okay. Yeah. Making a car that is designed to mow me down, that is not enjoyable to anyone. <laughs> Except, I guess, the people who are in them. But, yeah, it's... I don't know. I'm not too sure. But I do like some of the features. It's got the... um, It has, like, a beacon you can put down, which I'm actually a big fan of that. So, like, you can... When you're driving it, you can put a spawn beacon down. So I think that's a cool addition. Mm, um, that is really cool. Yeah. The thing that I don't like is it essentially has a trophy system built into it and I hope that doesn't work for C5 but Hmm. I'm pretty sure like shooting a rocket launcher at this thing it'll automatically stop that so it's like what how am I going to kill it (laughs) you know what I mean (laughs) how are we meant to kill this if it's got a yeah essentially trophy system built into it I'm not sure unless it, it might have like 
only three uses or something, and then it goes away. I'm not sure, but I can. Mm-hmm. I will say right now, this will get nerfed. It, it already is yeah. annoying. And I've heard people say it was <laughs> very strong. Yeah, there's there's no way this doesn't get nerfed. Yeah, like right there's there's no universe where this exists that is there's not a, a, a an immediate and hard hammer of nerfdom coming down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that it's so it looks so tanky, right? It's just like a car but it's like fully armored. Mm-hmm. Then it has the it's got like a cannon. It's not a turret, it's a freaking cannon on top of it. And then it's got a turret on top of that. So it's like <laughs> what are you are you trying they have they not seen what happened when they put Anakin in Battlefront 2? <laughs> <laughs> they just put in the, the vehicle version of Anakin, like, oh, the other ones kind of suck. Let's make one that's super overpowered so it just balances it out. That's not how to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I'm, we see I'm here nervous, that there's a, a lacking of infantry-based vehicles. Well, yeah. let's just make one that's going to destroy everyone. Because yeah. we did have that one that also destroyed everyone before, but everyone didn't like that, so we kind of nerfed yeah. it some more. <laughs> uh, it's very... Some of these choices are very confusing, especially because they have, like, they've clearly stamped down on the vehicles, which I'm very happy with. They've they've pretty much every update for the last like three months has had nerfs. There's been no buffs mm-hmm. to any vehicles, um, even the ones they added to season one, the two choppers. They were nerfed like immediately. So yeah, you'd think they would just like nerf it straight away but i guess the thing with a lot of new content is that developers often let them be overpowered for like a week or two because it's like a new shiny mm-hmm. thing and i guess it's fun like if this is really overpowered i'll probably i'm not a vehicle player but i'll probably jump in and have a bit of fun with it so <laughs> as long as they don't leave it for like three months that's when it gets that's when it ruins the game because the bolty that like i genuinely have ptsd from the, the launch of this game. yeah <laughs> if that was nerfed in two weeks, it wouldn't have mattered. But because it lasted so long, that's the issue. So as long as they're aware mm. of that, I think it's fine if it's a bit overpowered for like the first, yeah, two to three weeks or something. Just just like stay on it. Just keep your eyes on it and hopefully they, you know, can try and... Hopefully they already have a nerf plan for it and they just go, yep, yeah, we're going to make it a little bit stupid for a few weeks because it's new and it looks cool and everything. Yeah, and then we'll bring it back again, which I think is fine because it's often the same with weapons. Like they usually, they usually launch weapons overpowered. Everyone uses them, then they're fun, they're exciting, and then they tone them down a little bit. So, mm-hmm. yeah, as long as they do, that, which I think fine. is the right way to do it. Um, yeah, to bring people in. Yeah, and especially because think- like if you add a new weapon and it sucks, like that's not fun. So I, I definitely mm-hmm. think it's the way to go. There's no way to quicker ruin everyone ever playing that weapon again than releasing yeah. one that is not uh that than releasing one that is just weak overall though what, what are your thoughts on the, the season um do you think it lives up to the first one do you think it's better than the first one do you think it's worse than the first one what, what, what are you thinking i've seen a lot of negativity just because people are like oh there's still only one map for me like mm-hmm. i knew like i just knew that anyone who thought i'll be honest this might sound rude but Anyone who thought there was going to be more than one map is very naive. We, we've we been yeah. shown from the first season and the eight months before that came out with zero content. This is not going to be a content heavy game. So for me, because my expectations were already set of like, we'll probably just get what we got in season one. I'm actually yeah. pretty happy with it because we're actually getting more. We're getting essentially the same amount of like key things. So one map, one specialist. We're getting an extra weapon this time. We're also getting the portal weapons. There's a couple of vehicles, the concussion grenade. So it's still, I still have to preface every time that the game is still not getting enough content compared to previous yeah. games and stuff like that. So it's not, I'm not sitting here like, oh my God, this is the best season ever. So much content. But mm-hmm. for this game, this seemed like a really good season. And um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed season one. I've been playing pretty much every week exposure has kept me engaged for three months pr- pretty much playing it exclusively yeah and the battle part like i just finished the battle pass this week and the last like i don't know the last two to three weeks i've been really like hooked on the grind because i was like oh it's coming to a close i better try and finish it mm-hmm. so season one kept me engaged enough and the fact that we're getting another season that 
is not only is the same but actually slightly better because we're getting like the the portal weapons and stuff like that. I think yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with it. And yeah, the map looks like a lot of fun. The weapons look fun. So the only real negative I have is that I probably won't use like with uh, Lise. She was I actually enjoyed using her and I still do sometimes. But this Crawford guy, I probably I'll probably use him just to see what he's like. But I'll probably never use him again after that. So that's really the only negative that I have. That the yeah. specialist isn't that interesting. But that's a bit more nitpicky because like. Yeah, not not every specialist is going to be everyone's favorite, so it's not really that mm-hmm. big of an issue. Yeah, exactly. I think overall it's it's pretty good. Uh, I I think if you expected more than one map, what whatever <laughs> you're doing, I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that is a level of just insanity that I I don't think. They've announced that they're going to do one map a season. That's all that they've said they'll do. Actually, mm. technically, they haven't even said that. But yeah, true. that is the bare minimum of what we expect them to. I don't think we're going to get higher than the bare minimum. And I I think it's fair for this game. Ideally, we would want more. But since they only had one map in the first season, we're only going to get one map in the second season. We're only going to get one map in the third season. We're only going to get one map in the fourth season. Overall, I think this is more content. That is good. That is 100% good. I want more content for each one. Hopefully, each season adds more content than the previous one. So far, so good. Um, We're also getting extra portal weapons, uh, which is interesting. And I think the new weapons that we're going to get is good because we get three. Was it only one weapon that we got last season? Uh, We got the... We got two. We got- One was the crossbow, which is like a bit mm-hmm. of a niche weapon. So, uh, it, in a way, feels like because that's not a weapon you're going to use like super regularly. So, it kind of did feel like one, even though there was actually two. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So two previous season, we get three this season. Maybe we get four next season. No, it's not something that I expect for sure. I expect yeah. very little content with every season. But I think if they want to bring people back, that is the decision that they w- should make. Um, so, yeah, I I think overall it's it's a pretty good update, honestly. Um, yeah. Ideally, we'd want more, but that's not going to happen. To be completely honest, the only area that I do feel is lacking is actually just the maps. As in, like, it would be great. Yeah. If, if this exact update happened, but we got two maps, I would think this is as good of a season as... Warzone, like uh, it, that we're getting enough weapons. We're gonna get the, like a Call of Duty season usually has four weapons. We're getting three, but we're also getting the two portal weapons. Um, in fact, no, sorry, we're getting five portal weapons into mm-hmm. this. So technically, eight guns are gonna be in All Out Warfare that weren't, plus then another five that weren't in Portal that are getting added to Portal, which may potentially end up in All Out Warfare as well. And then something we also completely forgot that I just realized is the two map reworks. I thought we would only get uh, one, yeah. we're getting two. So I don't consider that new content. That for me is an update, not a not content. Um, but that was another thing that I I thought the the orbital rework looks really good. I actually thought, wow, mm-hmm. that that because that map isn't like the issue with kaleidoscope and stuff they are just fundamentally bad maps. Whereas Orbital, yeah. I do think, is a good map. And now with those changes, it won't mm-hmm. just be a good Battlefield 2042 map. I think it's actually going to end up a, a good Battlefield map because they're kind of taking a good foundation and now they're putting all these changes in there that are really fixing the only issue with it, that it was a little bit open in areas and it was a bit like, you know, a bit too clean, the the whole runway sort of area was all just like perfect concrete now it's all like broken up and everything so yeah I, I think this season is actually genuinely acceptable for me it's just the only area is you would ex- you would if in a perfect world you would expect more maps I think that's the only mm-hmm. issue but like we've said I don't yeah I never expected that we were saying two weeks ago we weren't even sure we'd get a map so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like that's yeah I'm not sure how people jump to the conclusion of like Hmm. Last se- the first eight months we got nothing. Then season one we got one map. 
So now this season, I guess we'll get four maps. Like, <laughs> I don't know who thought that way, but I've seen, I have seen a lot of complaints about it, and I was, I'm just like, I'm sorry, but that's that's on you, not on them necessarily, because you got your expectations way too high, and this that was never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um. A, this like four minutes ago. Uh, Battlefield Bulletin posted that there are going to be three t- tornadoes on the stranded map. Three? Yeah. What? I literally, yeah, actually, as we, looking as, at the as, pictures, yeah. What? As you were just talking, I got a notification for Battlefield Bulletin, and <laughs> I was like, whoa, wait, wait a second. Interesting, though, because so, yeah. the second picture, I'm not sure if that is another tornado or... Or if that's just I the think dust it's from the second one. Yeah, it's stretching it to pull stills from a a highly edited trailer to draw mm. the conclusion that there are three of them. I think yeah. there will be two of them. I think, especially because Kevin has tweeted like with two exactly that yeah. they're getting two. But yeah, just wanted to to bring that up in case anybody else was, was saw heard our conversation <laughs> yeah. and then heard uh, then saw that. Um, but yeah, I think. Ideally, we would want more maps. Uh, ideally, we'd want more general weapons. Uh, I think in a perfect world, we'd have more specialists. Uh, obviously, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have specialists. But <laughs> yeah. if we have to have specialists, I think in that ideal world of specialists existing, uh, we would get more of them. I, I could see maybe two a season. That would look pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I, I think with how much is having to happen i mean we're going to be a year from launch and it's still going to be very lacking in terms of previous iterations of battlefield uh the franchise and i doubt if we even get to the year two mark yeah but um but i i think yeah i think very good that you brought up the the map reworks because we expected one now we're getting two which is good and yeah. the orbital update, uh, I think, is going to make that that map so much better. Yeah. And I exactly. think it's going to be great. Because that middle section, middle section, we've said this so many times that that is the most problematic part of orbital. Yeah. And the exactly. weird, like, little outpost that's way over there that no one ever goes to. And if <laughs> yeah. you do spawn there, you're never going to get to where you want to go. They yeah. fixed both of those. Yeah. It's like that one actually... The um the renewal one, I'll be honest. Again, it's I think that map is just fundamentally not good. It's I, so I'm not yeah, that I'm not looking for forward to it. Yeah, I also struggled to find the differences in the yeah. footage. It's like the thing, oh, there's a storage the thing container? with that map is that is just they've just plonked cover on it. Like that's mm-hmm. really all that's changing. So for that one, I'm not gonna like praise them too much because it's just like it's kind of the same as Kaleidoscope. Good changes. Yes, um, makes it definitely better, but it's not like. It's not like the map is now good. It's still not very good. It's just better than it was. But the orbital changes, I think that actually looks like that takes that map from, say, a 7 to, like, an 8.5. Like, that's a genuine Mm -hmm. jump. And that's something that I'm pretty excited for because that was already my favorite map. And if we can now have, like, you know, stranded exposure and orbital in a three-rotation playlist, that those maps are all good enough that that's, like, actually a lot of fun that I could have, I could play that for ages and ages. So, um, yeah, all all decent changes, but the the orbital one looks genuinely like an actual update to the map rather than just mm-hmm. chucking some cover on it. Yeah, like I kid you not, I had to watch that so many times of the little gif or whatever they had there. Yeah, of like, wait, what a second, what, what happened? <laughs> Uh, there's a bush there now. Um, <laughs> the big like uh, I hate that map so much. I yeah, that's will my quit map. if it comes into the rotation. The thing I, that actually, sucks too is there it's is one no of the most beautiful looking maps that mm-hmm. I've probably ever it seen is. in any shooter. It looks amazing. Like it's so the concept for it. I remember when I got the like early access to sort of learn about the game and I saw the screenshots of that map and that was the one I was I was saying like that is going to be the best map and unfortunately it just doesn't play well but it looks yeah it's like it feels like wasted potential because it's it's such a unique map mm-hmm. I, I 100% agree I think it could have so much p- 
potential if they took the idea of it and actually pulled it off well. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely just like... And I guess part of the issue is that is just to do with the concept that it does have to be like a flat... Like the at least the inside of the wall has to be flat because it's all like vegetation and stuff. So mm-hmm. that's kind of just like a flaw in the concept more than... Because it's not like they can put you know i guess there is that hill over to the left like it's not like it has to be flat really and i guess you can do vegetation on like you can have farmland that's not flat so maybe they could change that but yeah it's kind of Mm -hmm. i look at it and i go uh it it kind of was destined to not really work because it's just so perfectly flat the whole way over so much potential but i think overall it's a good step in the the good direction uh of what we want and need in the game so I think it's pretty good. Um, obviously, there's still a lot to work with, and uh, I, I think uh, we just need to continue giving the feedback of what we think needs to be changed. So, yeah. Um, but overall, pretty good. Yeah, it definitely looks like a good good update. Like That's the key thing. I was a, I was a little bit nervous that the first season would be like a one-hit wonder because it was it, that kind yeah. of... That, blew my expectations not as in like oh that was the best season ever but i i wasn't expecting much at all and exposure yeah, exactly. was really good and it, it played the whole season played well and then i was kind of thinking oh like maybe they got lucky because we look at everything else in the game it hasn't panned out well so for mm-hmm. this one to just look good again that's it's definitely a step in the right direction because it could have ended up that that first season was just kind of lucky and then this one, you know, the next map could have just been discarded 2.0 and it could have sucked. But Mm -hmm. it all seems like it's positive and that's, yeah, that's all we can ask for really is just that each season keeps building on the game and that seems like what's what's happening so far. Yeah, exactly. I I think, I mean, we were talking about this last week, of will it live up? And I think it it met the level of the first season. I don't think the map... At this point, having not played it, obviously, uh, Exposure was one of those maps where we could look at it and be like, yeah, this is going to be good. And yeah. this is not one of those maps that you can look at and be like, yeah, this is going to be good. I think we're going to have to play it before we can really make that decision. Yeah, I agree with that because it's, it's lacking that, like, um, I don't know how you, I guess it's lacking that, like, wow, this is a Battlefield map look to it. It's just like, it just looks like any map from any game because exposure is like multiple levels in a, you know, a landslide in the middle of the map and stuff. That looks like a Battlefield map, whereas this is just a bit more basic. But in saying that, it also looks very fast-paced and chaotic. So that's that's the thing I've been wanting. So if it has to be a bit more simple to do that, then I'm I'm fine with that. And I'm definitely keen to get my hands on it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah same here i mean they just said when they said close quarters combat i was there yep that's all i needed to hear to be honest (laughs) those are my my three favorite words close quarters (laughs) combat (laughs) exactly but thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the battlefield show we greatly appreciate all of your support and we uh want to I just want to, I was checking Spotify earlier and I just want to say thank you all for all of you who went through and uh, left us a rating as well as those who left us reviews on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. We greatly appreciate those and uh, definitely, definitely helps out a ton. We've got like 4.9 stars on uh, Spotify with like 24 ratings. So it's very good. Love to see it. Appreciate the support everyone. That That is great to see. It is. I, I was very surprised to it because I'm not a podcast listener on Spotify, but uh, I know it's big and uh, I definitely, uh, it's, that's why we put it on there for everyone who checks it out on Spotify. Uh, we definitely, definitely appreciate you all uh, taking the time to uh, leave reviews and, and ratings for us on, on those platforms. It, it helps us out a ton, honestly. Um, but thank you all so much for listening to this episode again. And uh, thank you to Ethan Clark for the beautiful thumbnail. You can check out Sammy's channel, Sammy Boy, as well as Sammy Boy Star Wars if you want the Star Wars side of things. And you can check out Uplink Podcast if you want to check out uh, this podcast with a video in the background of gameplay. And uh, just want to shout those out. As always, we'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs>